Hey there, Ron Sullivan, your online hitting consultant, saying let the ball flight be your teacher, right? And I'm going to jump over to a, a video that we use as an introduction inside of the Fundamental Perfection Program to kind of build the basis for what I want to talk about today as we come back to this Nelson Cruz drill. So we got to talk about approach, right? Kids are always out and around contact, and that's what they think hitting is. I've talked about this in my videos before, that kids are really an approach problem out of the gate more than they are a mechanical problem. And so we're going to address that in every single swing that we take. So I want to talk to you about a way to diagram the baseball for your players so that they understand this. So right now you're sitting in the catcher's position, and I'm out towards where the pitcher would be. And the right-handed hitter is going to be here, obviously a left-handed hitter here, right? And so I want you to think about this side of the ball, which is on the pitcher's side, is the 12 o'clock side of the ball. On the catcher's side of the ball is the 6 o'clock side of the ball. What kids do, and we'll talk particularly about right-handers, when they swing the bat, they're going to move the bat behind, under, and around to the 5 o'clock side of the ball. Approach-wise, this is the opposite thing that we want to do. So we want to encourage the player to take the good part of the bat and whatever drill we're doing, isolation drills, dynamic balance drills, anytime we're working on a tee, we're going to take the good part of the bat and we're going to make sure that we're putting it through the seven o'clock side of the back of the ball. For a right-hander, for a left-hander, we're going to be trying to work through the five o'clock side of the ball. This is really important and ultimately the differences in the in in the moving parts you're going to see are going to be based more around them changing that approach and attacking the right part of the ball than it is anything mechanical. All right. So that video is really important for the program because what I'm trying to get players to understand is no matter what drill we're doing, if I don't have an approach or a basis of understanding of okay, I've got to have some barrel awareness here. If I'm just looking at what my elbows did on the swing and, and every swing I take, dad's calling me over and saying, hey, oh, your elbow did this that time and your elbow, oh man, and you're just looking at the moving parts and you're not focusing on approach, uh, you're, you're going to constantly chase your tail. I know that from experience as I spent thousands of dollars on software and the best cameras you could find before iPads and iPhones and all those things and man I just knew if you could just break it down in slow motion you could take any kid to the next level right and video is very helpful there's no doubt about that but sometimes you can focus on very simple things and you can get big results from simple things right so I want you to think about if some of you uh, are gun owners and you go to a gun range and you'll hit shoot at targets right when is the last time you went there and you saw a grouping that was uh, not so tight and you went, oh, that was good, right? You maybe hit the bullseye once and you had a bunch of them on the outside. It was real inconsistent. Or you go to the driving range, the golf course, and you hit balls all over the range. And you got one target that's 130 yards out and you're, you're hitting way right of it, way left of it. Every now and then one drops on top of where you're hitting it, but, but the majority of them are offline, right? You say to yourself, man, I need some work. And I see so many people these days doing T work and when they're doing tee work, they're just, you know, the, there's a dad over here, right, or coach, not just a dad. You know, he's over here with a camera, videoing across the plate going. And then after the kid hits, forget about the ball flight, uh, call him over and say, well, your elbow did this, and this did this, and your back shoulder's collapsing, and all these things. And listen, mechanical awareness can be an important part of this, but I'm going to try to really simplify something for you today, right? So I always tell my students, my in-person students, and of course my online students, we we're going to let the ball flight be our teacher today, right? Whenever you hit a ball, um, we should see if we're doing it. I don't want you to think about this. Look at look at this position that Nelson Cruz is in at the beginning of this drill. He's got his feet set. Many of you will recognize this, what I call the dynamic balance position uh, in, the, in the program. But his feet are set. He's not worried about weight shift, timing moves. He's saying, all right, now I'm just going to pound out some balls here. Now, I want you to watch this, all right? Now, not many kids are going to do that. Most kids do a one-handed drill. They're going to flip the bat over the top of the ball or something like that. But I want you to watch the grouping here. That's really important to see. Without even Nelson Cruz thinking about it. Boom. All right, I just hit that. That guy's going to load up a ball for me. Boom. Same basic spot there. Yeah, I'm pretty good, he said to the player person back there. Boom. Hits the same spot. Not even thinking about it. Boom. Same spot. So, a lot of times we don't hit balls on a tee and think about this. Nelson Cruz is probably not thinking about his grouping being really tight here, um, but it's something that it gives you a lot of feedback. So if you have a kid that's doing tee work, typically what I'll see is 
is a kid will put a ball on the ground pull side right off the tee or roll over one on the tee or then and then the next one he'll pop up straight up to the top of the net and then the next one will be a line drive straight back through the middle and the next one will be a flare to the right side right you have this you have 10 different swings 10 different results now if your positioning is consistent and what is consistent about tee work the ball is sitting still right the ball is just sitting there it's always in the same spot it's always on time right and um, our, our position, if I'm, if I'm focusing on getting to a good starting position every time and I'm being consistent in that, then I should have consistent results. And if I don't have consistent results, I can say, well, there's something mechanical going on here, and there very well could be. Or I could just go, I'm going to try to get my ball flight to be more consistent. Now, what is true about this drill that Nelson Cruz is doing is every time he hits this ball, his barrel hits the same spot of the ball every time. And obviously, this is just like what I was talking about in that video you saw a while ago. Is he's taking the barrel through the seven. Really important for a one-handed drill, I mean a bottom hand drill like this, that if you're spinning barrels in a bottom hand drill and yanking balls on the ground pool side, you have a complete misunderstanding of what we're trying to accomplish here, right? He's just trying to ensure that he can stay inside of a ball with this mechanism, right? And so he's using barrel awareness, taking the good part of the bat, putting it on the right part of the ball, okay? But your grouping should be consistent. And this is, I've worked with eight-year-olds that know more about uh, how to make an adjustment than most coaches will, will throw out. So, for instance, if typically you'll go to uh, 8U or 9U practices and the kid's struggling and the, the hitting or the, the guy that's pitching is going, hey, you're pulling your front shoulder out. You're not taking your hands to it. Or there's, then there's dad on the side and saying, your elbow is doing this. And, hey, you're casting. Remember that drill we were doing? And the kid's like going, oh, my God, he's reeling. Here's what I tell an 8-year-old. I say, Hey, so my eight-year-old has a basic understanding, or we should maybe say a, a solid understanding of that clock illustration that I used in the approach video, right? And I say, hey, so I just noticed on that ball right there, you put a ball on the ground pull side. So what did you have to do in order to, um, to do that? And um, you'll see that young players, even kids, can go, they understand that basic idea and they go, okay, well, I had to hit the top side of the five in order to do that. So we're talking about a right-hander. And I say, yeah, make an adjustment. This is, for young players, what you're able to teach when you teach barrel awareness, right? If you're focusing on taking the good part of the bat to the right part of the ball, you don't have to focus on hand path and creating awareness where the knob's going to go. And again, I don't have anything against those things, but I'm just talking about a young player, I'm teaching them barrel awareness. I want them to be focusing at the end of the kinetic chain. Where is that going? right? And you can do so much with an 8 or a 9-year-old by just talking to them about that. So if I get a player that hits a flare, I'll say, wow, I think you, were, you had the right idea there. You were trying to get to the 7, weren't you? And they're like, yeah. And I say, okay, but you hit the bottom of the 7. They go, yeah. And so let's say you have a player that's hit five flares in a row. You could take that player and say, hey, I need you to hit the top of the seven. You're really off track here. I need you to get to the top of the seven if you can. Now, a lot of you go, oh, my God, you don't want to challenge players to hit ground balls. Are you kidding me? <laughs> We're kids learning the game, right? They, they, they have no barrel awareness at all. If you took a kid that's 10 year, uh, 8, 9, 10 years old that hits nothing but flares and little pop-ups and little soft ground balls, and you teach them to attack the top of the seven, you're probably going to build a hitter. Uh, the other alternative, what they normally do, is not going to build a hitter, right? And so you can use things like hit the top part of the ball, right, for a player that has no concept or barrel awareness, and it's going to be effective, right? So let the ball flight be your teacher. If you're going into the cage and you're hitting balls with your kiddo and you've got a, the tee setup is always the same or you have it in the same spot for 25 to 30 balls and your kid is hitting uh, half of them on the ground pool side, Half of them are flares up to the top of the cage. Get their focus there. Say, hey, you know what? Here, and take a hula hoop or something and put it in a certain spot in the cage where that ball flight should go and say, I need you to wear that spot out, right? And then let the athlete make the adjustment. Don't make the adjustment by saying, well, if you'd stop doing your elbow like this, you're probably going to hit that grouping better because that's not going to change it. <laughs> it's not. You, Player being barrel aware, right, and saying, oh, that part of the bat needs to go on that part of the ball? Okay, I got this. Ron Sullivan, your online hitting consultant. Thanks.